chapter 7 verses 1 through 9 when you found it you discovered these words after these things Jesus walked in Galilee for he did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him now the Jews the Jews feast of tabernacle was at hand his brothers therefore said to him depart from from here and go into Judea that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. You go up to this feast. I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. When he has said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. All right. I want to talk about the right time. All right. All right. The right. The right time. Ecclesiastes declares that there's a time for everything. There's a time to live, there's a time to die. There's a time to moan, and there's a time to laugh. Ecclesiastes says that there's a time for everything under the season. You see, time has to be right for things to come to pass and be successful and be blessed. 
If the fruit falls from the vine or the tree before time, then it will not be fruitful. If you laugh out of turn, then it would not really be funny. There's a time to speak and there's a time to refrain from speaking. To everything under the season, there is a time for it. I recall 1982, probably a little before some of you were born, and if you were born during that time, then you were in right in the middle of the swing of things. It was a time when music was really music. It was a time when love and happiness was on the scene. All right. It was a time when people talked about love, soul, and happiness. The year was 1982. Mm -hmm. The musical group known as The Time, yeah. led by Morris Day, coined right. an album, and it was called What Time Is It? This album peaked on the R&B charts, rank, ranking number two in R&B, ranked number seven in pop. This album covered 38 weeks of being on the billboard. Some of you remember the question right now, and some of you remember the tune. What time is it? Yes, it was Morris Day that came out with the slogan, he came out, and this particular album was rated gold with over 500,000 sales in a very short period of time. All right. You see, they didn't have the benefit of internet at that time. So people heard the album, they heard the songs on the album, and they went out and they bought the album. Young folk, for those of you who don't know what an album is, it was a big old record. You don't know what a record is, it was something before CDs and DVDs. If you don't know what an album is, it was a big old round disc that you put on what was known as a turntable. And you put it on 33 because you had to slow it down in order to get it running the right speed. The other thing we had was a record that was like twice the size of your CDs today. All right. And the record ran on 45 and the album ran on 33. All right, now you're right. You see, the album was sure, composed right. of several songs, and this particular album was called What Time Is It? <laughs> it was a time when when the 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 time came out that they started in Prince's, you remember Prince, don't you? They started in Prince's private studio in his home. They began in 1981, but even though they began in 1981, they realized that it wasn't time for their record to hit the scene. All right. Even though they started in 1981, it wasn't until 1982 that they broke out with all their theatrics, yes, sir. with all their moves, and with all their smoothness, and asked the question, what time is it? All right. Yes, it was the time, the, the, the rap group, the, the, the pop group, the R&B group, known as the time, that asked the question, what time is it? Today I want to tell you that there's a time and a place for everything. Yes, it is. You see, the civil rights movement had the right people at the right time. Yeah, yeah. The right sacrifices at the right time. Yeah, yeah. They had the right people to sit down at the right time. They had the right people to stand up at the right time. Yeah. Because if some of our young folk would have been born in the 60s, they wouldn't have made it in the civil rights movement. No, they wouldn't have. But because God is such an awesome God, yeah. he had the right people at the right time. Right. And, and the time ought to be right for everything. Yeah. There's a time to marry. Mm -hmm. There's a right time. There's a time to give birth. There is a right time. Yes, sir. The time has to be right in order for things to be successful. In the country, we had fig trees. And as long as the figs were hanging on the tree, they were green. But the moment they fell to the ground, God was saying to us, now is the time. All right. It's time now. It's time out for young folk who, who will be disrespectful to parents. 
it is the right time for us to get control of ourselves. It's time out for parents concerning themselves but being their friends with their children. It's time out for that. It's time out for police officers going beyond their call of duty and, and causing trouble in our neighborhood just because they have a little authority. It's time out for that. All right. My question today to you is, what time really is it? What time is it? What time is it? What, what time is it? It's time for us to get our education because once you get your education, no one anywhere can take it away from you. All right. It's time for young folk to go to work and stop sitting on the side of the curb begging for a dime or a dollar. It's time. The time is right, right now. It's time for men to realize that chivalry is not dead. It's time for men to get to a point in their lives where they will open the door for her. I know she's healthy. I, I know she can open the door for herself. But it means much when you're the one if you don't open it for us, somebody else will. Right. It's time, it's time, it's time. It's time for women to, to find a way to do something other than twerk. Yeah. Yeah. It's time for men to get, get involved with, with one woman and leave the others alone. The time is right to them. It's time for girls to stop showing all their body to everybody in the world just for a dollar or a dime. It's time today for us to make a change. All right. Don't you know we can make a change? We can, we can find out the right time to do everything. We can find out the right time to get in our books. It's a time to sleep. It's a time to work. It's a time to study. We all need something in our head so it can drip down to our heart, so it can come out into our lives. It's time for us to live right before yeah. the Lord. Yeah, you're right. In the text, you find Jesus after he had fed the 5,000. That's why the Bible said after these things had happened, what happened was he had fed the 5,000 in John chapter 3. A little boy gave up his lunch in John chapter 6. A little boy gave up his lunch, his little minnows, and his biscuits, and 5,000 folk were sick with fed. Let me tell you what time it is. It's time for us to give all we have to the Lord and stop faking and jaking and be committed to him and him alone. Amen. You stop depending on Tyrone them and Shaquita them. It's time for us to depend on the Lord. All right. Give it all to him. And as you give it to him, he is able to bless you real good. He is able to bless you a heat and a plant if you give it to the Lord. Right. This little boy sets a great example for us this morning. He tells us, all I have is my little lunch. But he gives up his whole little lunch. And he gives up his lunch. When he gives up his lunch, a multitude of folk, a multitude, 5,000 men besides women and children are fed with a little boy's lunch. If God can take a little boy's lunch and bless the whole nation, how much more can he be, be a blessing in your life and you can be a blessing to others if you give it all to the Lord? Your talents need to be, your talents need to be given to the Lord. Your time needs to be given to the Lord. Your treasure needs to be given to the Lord. And you ought to give it to him without complaint. All right. Jesus goes on in John chapter 6 and says, I am the bread of life. And because there was no more bread being handed out, they began to walk away and leave him. I just want to let you know your friends are sticking with you just because you got something. But you get broke, busted, and disgusted. Then they will walk up and leave you. And then they will stand with the other crowds and tell them, oh, they just messed up. And then they will tell your secrets that you told them when they were your friends. That's why you better stop hanging out with certain folk doing certain things. Because they will tell all of your secrets regardless of how close you used to be. I thank God that God won't tell the secrets. I thank God that God will keep it to himself and, and God will come to me with it and tell me that you need to straighten out this and you need to straighten out that. You need to know that it's time for us to search out and look to God. All right. Peter gives his confession. And in the midst of Peter gives the confession, let me just share with you, Judas never confessed. And there is always one in the bunch. And for some folk, there are always 20 in the bunch. 
like on today. It only takes 19 drops of rain to stop 20 Christians from coming to church. Matter of fact, it doesn't have to rain. It, it can just be a forecast that it's going to rain because of our lack of commitment unto the Lord. He moves to chapter 7, and when he gets to chapter 7, Jesus' family members are there. His biological brothers are there, and they are urging Jesus on, don't stay here in Galilee. Why don't you go on, go on, why don't you come on, go with us up to Judea, because in Judea you can put your gift on display. Yeah, yeah. Let me just let you know this, sometimes folk have ulterior motives when they're patting you on your back. Not all the time. Not all the time do people really want to look out for you. Not all the time are they looking for you to grow in Christ. Not all the time are they encouraging you because they want you to be somebody that you're really not. Sometimes they're setting you up to be messed up. Jesus' brothers. And let me just tell you right here. Sometimes it's not your enemies, it's your family members. Sometimes it's not your enemies, it's your family members that's setting you up. Sometimes it's not your enemy, it's your friends that's setting you up. And because it's your family members and your friends, you better watch out who you hang out with. Oh, yeah. Right. No, you're right. Jesus, Jesus says, no, I'm not doing that, I'm not going up. He says, whatever you do, you ought to go. The brothers want to know when you're going to go ahead and put your, your, your activities on display. My next point to you this morning is that you don't always have to show your hand on everything you do. That's right. You don't always have to demonstrate what's going, th going on with you and through you. All right. You know, when you look at the book of, of, of Kings, you will find out that the Naaman was a leper. And because Naaman was a leper, he thought the man of God should have come out the house and clapped his hand over the place and tell folks some hocus pocus and watch his leper disappear. But, but Naaman was told by the man of God, go down to the Jordan River, that nasty Jordan, dip down in the Jordan seven times, and when you dip down in the Jordan seven times, then you will be made whole. All right, yes, it is. You will be made whole. But Naaman wanted some hocus pocus. Naaman wanted something to go on that folk could see. He wanted a big show. Let me just share with you. Stop wanting to put on a big show and just serve the Lord. For when you serve the Lord, the Lord can bless you in secret. You call on him in secret. He can bless you while you're praying with him in secret. And then he will bless you openly. Yes, he can. That's why Jesus, Jesus says, that's why Jesus says, whatever you do, when you get ready to pray, go into your closet. And when you get to your closet, shut the door. What he's saying is, don't put your stuff on display. Let God put it on display for you. And when God puts it on display, God has a way of blessing you in spite of what you've been, in spite of what you've done, and God knows how to bless you at the right time, right in the presence of the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Jesus says to them, I, I can't go to Judea. I can't, I can't go over there right now because they're seeking to kill me over there. They, they're seeking to kill me. And Jesus knew he was going to die. He knew that he was going to be killed by mean men, but he looking at the right time. The question is, are you looking at the right time? The right. things that you've been asking God for, is it the right time? And God is an almighty God. God is an all-knowing God. God is an all-seeing God. He knows our time better than we know our time. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Let's just watch God and watch what God does for our time. He says, the Jews seek to, to kill me there. Mm -hmm. He says, the Feast of the Tabernacle, the brother says to Jesus, the Feast of the Tabernacle is taking place, and there's going to be a lot of folk there. It's going to be a great festival going on there. And in the midst of this festival, with all these people there, see, Jesus, you can put your wares on display. All right. They wanted Jesus to show out right there in front of them, but see, Jesus didn't come to show out. Jesus came to deliver men from a dying world. You see, even though you have a gift, many times you need to make sure that you use the gift for the right reason at the right time in front of the right people. All right. All right. Jesus says, you're looking to take me out to Judea, and if I go to Judea, they're going to kill me over there. And Jesus knew that they were trying to set him up. See, they were trying to get Jesus killed on, in the feast where Jesus was really headed to Calvary. Mm -hmm. So the feast is going on there. He said, well, you know, you know, the brothers, 
the brothers did not, the brothers really, really, really weren't encouraging him to encourage him. The brothers were encouraging him because, you know, brothers can get jealous. <laughs> Sisters can get jealous. They, they can get to a point in their lives where, where, where they really, 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 where they really, really act like they like you, they don't like you. You know, there, there is, police officers will tell you, there is, there is no more of a devastating call than a domestic violence call. Mm -hmm. Because kinfolk have a way of turning on the police officer when he gets there. Yeah. All right. yeah. And so the motives, the motives are things that you have to watch. He says, no, I can't depart. Y'all go on up there. Go on up there to Judea. You're the, he said, they said to Jesus, oh, go up there and all of your disciples will see. You can put it on display and the people that's already following you, they will follow you even the more. If you just go up to, the, up to Judea, if you just go up to there, Jesus said, no, y'all go here on. The works that, that you're doing, they will see them. Verse number four says, for, for, for no one does anything in secret, Jesus. No one does anything in secret, Jesus. He who does it in secret, God will make it known openly. But you need to make sure that you have the right motive with everything you do. Are you doing it so somebody else can shine? Are you doing it so you can shine? Are you doing it so you can have notoriety? Why are you doing it? They're, they're telling Jesus, go on so you can see it can be made known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. And even his brothers did not believe. So one reason why they did they, they were taunting him is because they really didn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, some of your family members are looking at you today saying, I don't believe he's changing. I don't believe she's different. And what they try to do is remind you of how you used to be. I remember you when. I remember how. I remember where. I remember which. I remember you when you were messed up. You need to remember and you need to tell them, remember this from this day forward. The last time I was broke, busted, and disgusted, I was broke, busted, and disgusted for the last time. Yeah, yeah. The last time you saw me that way, that was the last time. The now let me just stop and put this in your spirit and let you know now. They ought not be able to continue to call your past into your present. All right. In other words, when you say you are different, you ought to be different. Right. When you say that things are different about you, you ought to be different. Things about you ought to be different. Yes, Let me just say to you, you need to make sure that you serve the Lord with excellence yes. and walk with him in a mighty way. Yes, right. For even the brothers didn't believe. Now let me tell you, you would think that the brothers should believe since they've been with him. But, but I know better, I know better. It's some of those who have been with you for many years that don't believe in you. They rather believe in somebody they don't know. They believe that God has put greatness in their midst. They, they rather believe, they rather believe, they rather take you for granted. It's, it's a shame when a husband takes a wife for granted. And they talk crazy stuff like, well, she's 40 now, I'm going to trade her in for 220. First of all, if you're 40 and above, you can't handle the 40 year old. What you going to do with 220? Don't let a 10 second movement mess up your life from now on. Morris Day in the time asked the question, what time is it? They asked the question, what time is it? Because they knew in 1982, it's time for us to make our move, do our theatrics, and to let our album be released so it could be on time with success. If you trust God with your timing, then it will be successful. Stop telling God, God, I need you to move right now. Well, you didn't move for God right then. God took some years to get you where you are. God took some time to get you where you are. God has the right time. Let God do it in his time. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's why we pray. That's why we pray. And that's why we, we, we pray conceit without ceasing. We pray continually because we want God to choose his right time. The next time you pray, ask God, God, give me the right time. Yeah, yeah. 
Ask God to give me the right words. Ask the Holy Spirit to pray on your behalf because he knows what you need when you don't know what you need to say. I thank God for an intelligent God, the intelligent Holy Spirit. That's why he is the, the triune God. He, he is the third person of the triune God. He is an intelligent God. He is the Holy Spirit himself. He is intelligent. He knows what to do, when to do it, and the right timing in which it ought to be done. Right. We ought to go to prayers like God have your way in this situation, Lord. You see, some people, some people still mad at God because, because God took their family member too early, according to them. But let me tell you, God knows all. And God knew that some of us would still be dependent will still be dependent on that person that passed away and we would never get up off our hump to dump it and do anything for ourselves so we were dependent on somebody else to do it for us. That's why little girl, little boy, you better honor your parents while they're living because they won't always be here. You better honor those who pour into you now because one of these days they got to get out of here. You need to make sure you respect them now because one of these days they're going to leave here and you're going to be in charge and you're going to be in control. The question is, what will you do with what they left you? Yeah, sure, you're right. I was at the bank the other day and the banker was, and I was, you know, you know everywhere I go, I try to engage in a spiritual conversation and in the midst of it, I wanted to make sure that we checked on our money. Because I, I told him, you know, we got spoke at the New Beginning Church that that's concerned about their money. And in the midst of checking on the money, we began to lay out the plan, lay out the plan for our own house finances. And he began to tell the story of how a young woman, uh, parents passed away and they left her $50 and it was gone within two weeks. Wow. $50,000 and it was gone within two weeks. $50,000 just gone through it. And he, he tried to pull her over. He tried to talk to her. Said, baby, don't, don't do that. And now she has an account that's broke, busted, and disgusting. It's because we got to learn how to teach our children how to fish and not just give them a fish. All right. We got to show them the way of life. We have to show them that time is running out on me. Stop telling your children you're going to always be there for them because you will not always be there for them. They're going to either leave you or you're going to leave them. Sooner or later, they got to be grown, gone on their own, with their own home, so they can leave you alone. All right. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so I'm just tickled blue. I'm, I'm just so happy I'm black. I'm, I'm just so, I'm so, I, I get so joyful because my daughters are grown, gone, on their own, with their own home. I don't have to give them anything anymore. Hallelujah to the Lord. Davis don't shout as loud as I do, but she's jumping up inside right now too. Thank the Lord that they're grown gone, but you have to teach them to be grown gone and don't go. All right. All right. Megan worked at Taco Bell. She worked at the movie. She worked at the creamy ice cream place. And she would get off at 3 a.m. in the morning, but we had to get right back up at 7 because we had to be at the church at 8.30. Are you with me? Don't give me any excuses why you can't make it. It's simply because we got to teach them to make it. There was never a conversation about, Dad, I work all night. Do I have to go to church in the morning? Yeah, baby, we're going to church if you don't go to work. It's simply because you got to be dedicated and teach them to be dedicated to the Lord. There was never a night, there was never a Saturday night when she got in the car. Dad, I'm just too tired to make it anymore. She knew I wasn't going for it. She knew if she was in this house, she had to leave this house. And there was never a conversation. There was never a fight about it. It based on what we put in them now determines what time it's going to be later. And I know, I know you would, you would really hate it if you leave here and your child really couldn't make it. I know you would hate it if you leave here and they can't be independent because they depended on you. Yeah, right. But you got to put something in them now. Mm -hmm. You got to put direction in them now. Put wisdom in them now. You got to tell them no when it's time to tell them no. There's a time to say no, parents. Right. There's a time to say not only no, but no. <laughs> There's a time to tell them no. Wow. Jesus says to his disciples, no. Y'all go on up there. Y'all make it happen. Yes, sir. You all do what you all want to do. But my time is not yet. not yet. 
Jesus even had to tell his mama that my time is not yet. When she was at the wedding feast of Canaan of Galilee, yes. she came and said, the wine has run out. What she was trying to tell him is, I want you to do your thing. Yeah. Jesus said to him, my time is not yet. That's right. But when the time was right, mm -hmm. Jesus asked him to go get buckets of water. And some, somewhere between the dipping of the water and the presenting to the guests, the water blushed and became wine. Let me tell you, success takes place when the time is right. Young man, don't get in a hurry to get grown. Young woman, don't get in a hurry to get grown. Because when you are grown, you will have to make it on your own. And I really don't understand some, some parents that let children say, well, I'm grown now. Well, take off everything I bought and you leave here with what you have. Grown folk buy their own clothes. Grown folk pay their own bills. Grown folk get their own friends. Grown folk fix their own car. If you're grown, you ought to be able to handle it. All right. Amen. If you're at home, you better stay there as long as you can with a good attitude. Because when the time is right, when the time is right, boy, my mama started making fine cabinet doors and stuff when we left the house. When, when the last one got out of the house, she broke the she 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 broke the wall up. <laughs> she we don't, we don't have she has three bedrooms at home and she's sleeping in every one of them. It's an indicator to us that you come for the weekend and you get out of here. Some of my, my, my some of some of my family members who are who are who are children in their twenties. Oh, grandmama, I'm gonna come live with you. No, you're not, baby. I have raised mine, and because I raised mine, I'm not gonna raise anybody else. Amen. She says she gonna go where she wanna go. When she wanna go, she doesn't have a dog nor a goldfish to have to worry about. So when you go, go on out there, honey. Make this world your place. The disciple says, Jesus' brother says, the world, Jesus says to his brothers, the world don't hate you because you're of the world. He says to us this morning that because we are of the world, if you act like the world, you're of the world. If you're in the world, you do what the world does. You, do, you act like them, you carry yourself like them. Jesus says to his brothers, the world don't hate you. But they hate me because I testify that they are evil. The world is evil. Yes. And you don't testify that the world is evil, evil, evil because you're of the world. All right. When you're of the world, you act like the world. Right. Amen. Let me tell you the reason why we are not packed out in here today. Because we're not of the world. We're not in the world. Let me tell you, I can pack this place out every Sunday. If I, if I brought a clubbing atmosphere in here, it will be packed out every Sunday. People who stayed out all night long, they'll show up every Sunday because we're going down there and we're going to be hopping box some more. All I've got to do on Sunday is tell them, your blessing is coming. It's right around the corner. People will keep recycling themselves and showing up every Sunday because they want to see the prosperity take place. But it looks like to me, if the prosperity has not taken place in the last five years, you ought not be going back to that recycle attitude over and over again. Yeah. But I can pack it out every Sunday. All I got to do is start lying from the pulpit. Uh -oh. yeah. And say, so, oh yeah, your blessing is here. And God is going to bless you before five o'clock in the morning. Let me tell you, I'm not that deep and wonderful. I don't know when the Lord is going to bless you. But I do know if you pray to him, have the right attitude with him, and walk According to his standard, he knows how to bless you with stuff you don't even ask for. The question is, is what we're asking for what we need? Is what we, we ask, and James said, we ask a miss because we have the wrong motives. The God we have, the God we serve, he is the God of perfect time. Jesus says, John chapter 7, verse number 8, Jesus is talking to them. He says, you go on up. <laughs> go on up to the feast. I am not yet ready to go up to the feast. My time is not fully come. You ought to have a time in your life. Family Lou Hammond declares that you ought to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. All right, sir. 
Young lady, if he treats you bad before you marry him, you just gave him a license to dog you out every minute. Young man, if she only calls on you when you need, she need a dollar or so, you're going to be dogged out the rest of your life. If he fakes his love now, if she fakes her love now, and men got to get off this thing, ooh, I like the way she built. Let me tell you, that was just a song in the 70s, 36, 24, 36. It was, brick houses don't, brick houses don't make good decisions. Just because they brick houses. Brick house. Matter of fact, brick houses, it takes some work to get a brick house. You got to put the water. Look at your man. You got to put the water on the wood, and, and then you have to stack the bricks <laughs> in the right way, the right form. If you're going to have a brick house, you got to work on that house. You run around here saying, Ooh, look how she struck when she walks. The devil knows how to strut. Ooh, look how beautiful she is. The devil imps are beautiful. Oh, he's so bow-legged. I just love his leg. A leg has nothing. Wait on your time. And women, don't let men keep coming by you acting like they're going to Popeye's or Church's Chicken. You are more than a breast and a stock. You are more than that. And then they want the Tuesday special when they come. Wait on the time. I'm talking about the right time. The, 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 the right time. Wait, wait on your time. Little, little girls, don't rush your time. Don't, don't rush your time. Babe, stay mama's baby as long as you can. Because sooner or later you're going to have to get out there. And then you're going to be coming back home hollering mama. Can you fix it for me? But Jesus, Jesus says, Jesus says, Jesus says, they, they love you, they hate me. My point to you today is, if you're of the world, if you're in the world, they're going to love you. In the church house, you have to understand, if, if everybody likes everything you do, if everybody is satisfied with everything you say, if, if everybody is on the bandwagon with you, there are several things going to happen. Number one, they're going to get off the bandwagon when the rough ride gets rough. Number two, they're on the bandwagon to see what they can get off the bandwagon. Number three, they just there for the parade. And when the parade is over, they are over. You know, Steve Harvey has, is a self-proclaimed matchmaker now. No degree. No education. And folk go to him to get their lives messed up even more than they messed up. He, he, he gives marital counseling. After his third marriage, he ought to be able to give something. <laughs> if he doesn't say anything but don't do what I did. He, that, that ought to be the title of his next book. Don't do what I did. We have to get to a point where we trust God for what God is doing in our lives. We got to trust God's timing. We got to trust what God is doing, just like Jesus trusted what God was doing. Yeah, yeah. Jesus trusted. Jesus didn't have a happy life like you want. Jesus left glory, had no worries, got off in a place called Bethlehem of Judea. He was born of a virgin. They laid him in a hawk trough. They wrapped him in grave clothes. That's how he showed up on the scene. That same Jesus that they laid in a manger, the same Jesus where there was no, no room at the end, the same Jesus, they lifted him high. They dropped him low. They nailed him tight. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. That same Jesus trusted God's time. They laid him in a bar or two. It was a bar or two because it didn't need it too long. It was a bar or two because early that third day morning, he gave that tool back to Joseph again. That same Jesus got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you right now. That same Jesus is going to catch a cloud one day, come back on planet Earth. That same Jesus is going to stop in midair. And all of us who are saved, all of us who are born again, all of us who trust him, we'll be caught up with him in the land. That same Jesus, we will forever be with the Lord. We will join in with the peace of the creature, round the throne of God, grab 
the throne. God, hold it, hold it, hold it. Blessed is the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Yeah, yeah. If you are here today and you never found this Jesus, you never confessed him as your Lord and Savior, the door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. This is the right time. You ought to come to Jesus. If you haven't just touched the story that Jesus died for our sins, he was buried in a barber tomb. And he rose from the dead. This is your moment. This is the right time. Don't wait till Wednesday night. Don't wait till next Sunday. It's not promised to any of us. But this is the right time. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. If you're here today and you've never been water baptized all the way under the old water, but you do trust the story, the door is open. You can come to Jesus just as you are. If you're here today and you're in between churches or you don't have a church home, I recommend this one. But Jesus is the captain of the ship. But he is the main attraction. But Jesus is the center of attention. The door is open. I welcome you to join the New Beginning Church. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. He will. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. Just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. He will help you. He will help you. Just now. If you're here today and you struggle with sin like the rest of us do, come let the church pray with you and pray for you. The door is open. The door is open. You can come to Jesus just as you want. All the doors are smiled. All the doors. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. You can come to Jesus just as you want. The door is open. You will save you. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for all that you are and all that you do. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the right time. You have perfect time. We ask you, Father God, to bless us as we go forth in your name with the perfect time of your blessing. Yes, that we will be able to sustain ourselves yes, through Jesus the Christ. So in Jesus' name we pray and we ask God. Yes. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. Amen. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He has blessed us one more time. To be on the land of the dying, here is for the land of the living. You can open the door. Hallelujah to the Lord. Let me thank those who have, have come to us with our uh, live broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Share My Road. Thank you for joining us. If you're ever in the Houston area, come by and join us as we are as reaching souls by lifting Jesus. You can uh, make donations now by a new cash app. A new cash app. The, the email for that cash app is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Come and join us here at New Beginning Church, 4251 Share My Road, Houston, Texas. Thank you again for joining us. God bless you and God keep us. Amen. Keep you as our prayer. Amen. Amen. Only thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We thank God for blessing.